Love Island Games is so bizarre, I don't think you'll believe it. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Hello friends, today we are going to be breaking down the new Love Island spin-off series, Love Island Games. I guarantee, even if you're like a Love Island super fan, you might not have known that this show was happening right now, or even what it's about, but don't worry because I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Love Island Games is a spin-off show to ITV's most successful reality TV show, Love Island. Hosted still by Maya Jama and voiceovered by the legendary Ian Sterling. However, instead of it using usually being aired to the UK, it's only available to stream in America. And we're going to get into why this is later in the video. The actual concept of the show involves previous Love Island contestants from various countries that the show took place in, competing in challenges against each other in the hopes of finding another shot at love. Don't worry, I I'm a bit confused too. The show's going to involve couple and team games, and the winner of these challenges will gain immunity from eviction over the three weeks that the show will run and the last remaining couple win the show and also win a hundred thousand pounds which is double of the total love island uk season winners fund so this show is basically the hunger games if everybody had a teeth whitening sponsorship and was sponsored by boohoo that would have been a terrible hunger games movie the show will also involve loads of traditional love island features such as recouplings new arrivals and major twists i guess it's time for us to take a look at the first episode. The show starts off with Maya Jama flying onto a remote island by helicopter and the first thing you realise is the production value is insane. It's so much better than ITV and this is most likely down to the Love Island games being aired on Peacock which is actually a paid streaming service so the budget must be 10x what ITV's is as you can watch Love Island for free on there. Maya Jama all clear for landing. What is this? This is like some sort of like Call of Duty campaign intro. This is so dramatic, I love it. I'm Maya Jamma and this is what you've been waiting for. Welcome to Love Island Games. Wait, is that the is that the villa? I don't think they're gonna fit all the islanders in there. I think a couple of them's gonna have to sleep top and tail. Unless it's like a Doctor Who TARDIS, you walk in and it's absolutely huge. But at the minute, it just looks like where Shrek oh, takes a shit. I'm glad they put a, a signpost on this island because uh, there's so many directions to go. Just in case we get lost, I feel like they're really playing into the IQ of uh, Love Island viewers right now. That's the shed, that one. Look, the only the only thing on the island, that, that's the shed. Right, guys, just so we're all on the same page. Even the way they introduce each islander that's going to appear on the show is absolutely mental. It's like out of Star Trek. Let's do this. Okay, team, let's go to UK. Zoom in. Who carries their phone in there? Football shorts don't even have pockets. How's he just kept his phone in there? Who keeps their phone in their pocket when they play football? No wonder you were only a semi-pro, Toby. You could have been professional if you just put your phone away. <laughs> Sorry? They're clearly not just picking these people off up the street. Like, why is this man just stripped on the red carpet? And why did he have swimming shorts underneath his tuxedo? What's going on? Is it like Superman, just so you're always ready for the villa? Is that what Love Island does do? They just... There it is. Packing shot. Ready. like a good shirt. Why are you ripping the material mate? Just take it off. It's a couple extra seconds but you know you can put that top back on again. So as you can see it's basically like an all-star love island. Actually to, to give it its full name all-star love island contestants that Peacock could afford to bring back. Imagine the bag they'd have to pay like a Tommy Fury or like a Molly May to get on this show. It would be too much. It would bankrupt them. We then get our first voiceover from the king Ian Sterling but who he chooses to talk to is really odd compared to the usual Love Island season. Welcome America to the first ever Love Island Games. America? What about us? What happened to 
the British people! I feel betrayed by this. It's like a dagger in the heart. Look, it's bleeding. Can you believe it? We built this show on our own shores. And then a big American company comes and just takes it away with their big bang. We invested everything into this show. Well, I didn't. Well, I guess time. That's a big investment. It's like if, you, if your long-term girlfriend ditches you for a boy that, that doesn't even care about that. Do you know what I mean? This is heart-wrenching. Oh, America will never love you how I loved you. On this note, quickly, it is weird to see, like, America's obsession with Love Island. Like, they launched their own USA version of it, and I believe there's been five seasons, but apparently it hasn't took off, according to this article. And instead of just taking that L, you know, just holding the L, Love Island, maybe it isn't for American people. No, they have to come and buy the British one. Take our contestants and try and make it popular over there. Oh. And as they address the American audience, the first people they introduce onto the island are the American All-Star contestants. With the iconic intro tapes. Let's say hello to our first Love Island legends. USA girlies coming in hot, baby! Ah, oh, cancel it. It's over. I'm done already. <laughs> Imagine someone in the UK saying that. UK girlies coming in hot. Mm, doesn't fit, does it? I love it though. Americans are just so high on life. They just love stuff. They're just hands in the air. Whereas if you put your hand in the air in the UK, everyone's like, oh, what? Ooh, didn't even shave her armpits. Wow. Everyone's picking at you. You're not allowed to have fun in the UK. I'm Justine, and I was your first black winner of Love Island USA season two. Thought I found my person. Did not end well. Ugh. You know, Love Island, like, does it actually work? Like, I'm trying to think of couples that are still together compared to couples that aren't. You know, you're always going to have some couples that work just because law of averages, but in general, I don't think it does what it's meant to do. I think the best thing that came out of my last- Christ, how many, how many bloody booty shots is there? Somebody check the cameraman's hard drive. Let's keep it above the waist, fella. I'm athletic. I love to compete. I love to get down and dirty, so I'm 100% back to win again. Let's do this. It's game time. Okay, she seems like she's got a personality. I'm going to be honest, I don't know any of the American contestants, but she looks like she could cause a bit of a stir. That's what we want. I think we're lost. Directions to the cute boys. Right here, guys. If you put in Google Maps, direction of the cute boys, by the way, I am um, trying to grow a mustache. Okay, I'm just I'm just seeing what the potential is. Okay, this is like day eight. Not looking great. If anyone asks us though, I'm just saying I'm doing it for November. So you can't take the piss. Can you stop staring at it. Stop staring at it. Stop it. Couldn't record the whole video like this now. I'm back, bitches, whether you like it or not. Alright, Voldemort. I wish Voldemort, like, that's how he introduced himself back in the Harry Potter franchise. I'm back, bitches. You like it or not? I'm Sally. I'm the runner-up from Love Island USA season two. Why have they got a chair in the sea? What's this meant to connote? That's what I want to know. Is it that uh, the relationships are built on unstable grounds? Maybe that's what the chair connotes. Or is it just a chair? I got a day in English literature, as you can tell. The one person I really don't want to see in the villa is Johnny. No, not Johnny. Not Johnny. I don't want to see Johnny. Who the fuck's Johnny? This is directed towards, you know, the an American audience. So if you are American and you watch Love Island, you probably understand these references. But as like a UK person watching this, I have no clue what she's about. Honestly, I keep thinking Edward Cullen is gonna come through the door and literally be like, I will die for you. You gotta be willing to die for me. That's a little bit intense. To die? I have to die for you? Do I? It's alright if Edward Cullen dies. The man's been alive for 200 years. I've only had 20 something. Also, why do you want Edward Cullen? That man can't go out in sunlight. You can't meet him on Love Island games. He'd just be sparkling. He'd be no use. You need to be more Team Jacob. I also want to win that prize in the end. Y'all think I'm second place material. Listen, if the prize is a child, I'm taking all the custody. What? I hope that's satire. I hope she doesn't think the prize is a child, because maybe that one's a little bit odd. That would be demonic. The prize is a random child. What's the child gonna say in this? Now it's time to say hello to a legendary Love Island Lothario. Let's go! What's up? Everybody, where you at? <laughs> Again, Americans are so up for it. Yo, let's fucking go! If someone walked in the UK villa like that, everyone would go, oh, oh, that's a bit icky. What, he likes having fun? Oh, uh, not for me. You're not miserable. What? No, you're not attractive. I'm Ray, and I'm from Love Island, USA season one. The OG season, the one that paved the way. In a perfect world, you know, say I go in there, I find me a little girl, we ride out to the end. Whoa, that was quite a cool dance move. That was quite nice. Diversity, if you're watching, my number is 079595. I might be 511, but look, I got 65 energy. What does that mean? You're 511, but you've got 65 energy. You don't. You're 511. You have 511 energy. What is a 65 energy? You're just constantly on your tiptoes, just. 
Hey, 6'5 energy. I bet that's in his Tinder bio. Also, if you're 5'11, just lie. Just say you're 6 foot. No one will know. I'm 6 foot 3, I believe, or 6 foot 4. But, guys, I've got energy of a 6 foot 11, am I right? I'd be standing on my tiptoes all day. Yo, I hope, like, Imani from season 5's here. Oh, she's, she's the most beautiful so woman bad. I've ever seen in my life. I like to sweat because I can afford it. Next up, look who it is. It's Imani. Oh, okay. So this is Imani. This is the guy that, the guy, the girl that Ray said he wanted to come in. Nice. It's almost like the producers knew. You will know me from the most recent season of Love Island USA. I did not think I was dramatic. It's really hard to like do any sort of commentary on some of the intro tapes because they're talking about their experience on a show that we haven't seen. She could say, oh yeah, I was, uh, I actually killed every contestant on Love Island and I'd be like, Wow. Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit dark, but I wouldn't know any different. But just quickly before we proceed with the video, I need to say that 69.9% of you are not subscribed to the channel. I know YouTube has been unsubscribing a lot of people from the channel, so just make sure you subscribe. Just press it; it takes one second. And we're chasing down half a million subscribers on this channel, so yeah. If you want to be in the before half a milli club, press it. Anyway, let's get back to the video. After they introduce all of the USA contestants first, it's now time to introduce the UK ones. Yeah. Three lions on our shirt, God save our king. Let's see who they chose from the UK, who we should know a little bit more about. Oh, okay. Okay, straight off the bat, I know every single one of these. This is not as bad as I thought. I thought they were gonna get like Casa Amor people in, but this is actually, this is quite a strong lineup. Has everyone been like single for a long time? I had a year relationship and now out, so. Yeah. Oh. Touch your yeah, subject. That's yeah. Okay. yeah, we're back. That's that's Toby. He was seeing Chloe Burrows, wasn't he? That's interesting. This must be really weird if you if you were like in a long term relationship with someone who's going back on this show and like watching them go back in. Like I wouldn't be able to watch that. I don't think. Okay, let's see their intro tips. I'm Jack. I'm 27. And I'm from East London. I'm from Love Island, UK, season four. Prior to Love Island, I was a PT and a semi pro footballer. I didn't realize he was a semi pro footballer as well. Why is, does Love Island just attract semi pro footballers? It's insane. It's like an academy for them. Also, I'm pretty sure Jack Fowler was quite big off Love Island. I wonder why he's going back in. Those foot asylum shoots just dried up. He was like, well, I gotta, gotta do something. Gotta try and get in JD next. There is flavours from all corners of the earth in one villa. I'm winning. Yeah, this guy's definitely in here for love. That's the reason Jack's back in. Because he wants to find love, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely not anything else. Winners win, and I'm a winner. But you didn't win your Love Island series, though, did you? You can't even win your own season. How can you call yourself a winner? I get on with the majority of the guys but if my guy is with a girl that I like, I'm coming for her. Whoa! If someone's with a girl you like, you're still coming for her. That's a little bit weird. Yeah, don't worry, babe. You ain't with me. Don't worry, I'll still be coming thinking of you. Oh, just cringe myself out. I think Americans are going to be, like, poetic. But I feel like English boys will be quite transactional. We're like, yeah, what's your Snapchat, babe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this girl, Liberty, she was actually really good on her season. Like, she's actually, like, a good person to put back in because I'm pretty sure she left in her season because she was going out with this guy called Jay. But everyone, like, kind of sussed out that he was using that to get to the final so then she kind of just they broke it off and i think she left just before the final so she's actually a really good person to, to put in this show because it gives her like a second chance i remember because her boyfriend jake was always like but you're my girlfriend lib you're my girlfriend you're my girlfriend i want to take you home i'm liberty i'm 24 just before the final the vibe fizzled out so i did what was best for me and i left she seems like a nice lass like she doesn't seem like you know the stereotypical kind of like influence that kind of loves themselves she kind of seems down to earth when i was walking past a fit group of lads in manchester this is what i looked like in my head and then this is what i did in reality so like what thriller Thrill. <laughs> just turning to michael jackson that's so relatable because when i walk past a group of people i'm like this you can't see that I'm moonwalking right now. And it's a 10 out of 10 moonwalk, guys. Trust me. I used to practice that in the mirror. I know a good moonwalk when I see one. I taught Michael Jackson everything he knows. Probably shouldn't say that. Black like I never left. I'm Toby, and I was runner-up in Love Island UK season seven. Again, this is actually a really good casting because I feel like uh, Toby was one of like Love Island's kind of best characters. Like I remember him just being like a total like fuckboy, and then he actually like became like a like a one-woman man. What a, what a what a roller coaster! What a transition! But yeah, I feel like again he's like a he's a big character to get in. Like they must have paid him a, quite a bit of money to get him back. People think I'm a bit of a player, to be fair. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to do trial and error to find. That right person for you. <laughs> 
That's so funny. That is the, the most fuckboy way of explaining that just shag about. Yeah, you know what you've got to do. You've got to be doing a bit of trial and error. You know, you've got to play the field. You've got to go forward, back. Try this one, try that one. It's all trial and error. Good explanation. I can't wait to see if my game is international. I think it is. Do you see me chatting to the girls and saying, oh, you want a couple? That's my line. Oh, yeah, that'll that'll get them going, you know. Just before you're trying to, you know, get in the bedroom with her, just whisper at you. Love, do you want a cuppa? Oh, that's what gets me going. Yeah, make sure you put two sugars in it. I've always said Love Island is a once in a lifetime experience, but I'm back, baby. I'm back. Round two. Oh, this guy. This motherfucker. This guy is an oddball. I just can't work him out. He's just a strange bloke. I was a professional dancer before Love Island. I represented England and became world champion. It does work with the ladies, I'm not gonna lie. But if you wanna see it, I will show you. Yeah, he's still weird as fuck. <laughs> Bless him, he seems nice, but he's just odd. Like, I wouldn't want to see him in a back alley, you know, and he's coming to you like... Like, I would be like, whoa, I'd rather you just get an iPhone. Have you seen him try and act, by the way? So him and his brother went on Hollyoaks as, like, actors, and this was the performance. It's so funny, just a side note. What did mum say? Probably stop whinging. True. How's Trish? Heartbroken. She thought she was about to get engaged. Couldn't have been further from the truth. That's made my day, that. There'll be nothing compared to what we've got planned for her. <laughs> oh my god. It's like, uh, you know, in like GCSE drama where you had to make, like, I like watch those videos where it was like, don't drink alcohol at the wheel. Otherwise, the consequences could be fatal. So funny. The UK Islanders then turn up to the villa to meet the American ones, and Jack Fowler straight away makes my penis curl into my body. I said the UK's here! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> No, it's not. We're not here. You don't belong to us. I said the UK's here. <laughs> no, it's not. Where's the flag? I want to see the flag behind you. I want to see you holding a, a pint of Stella. As a day one Love Island fan, I'm geeking low-key. I'm so crazy to see all the UK people that I've just been fangirling for so long. Not us in the same house. This must be so odd because the Americans already know all of the UK contestants before they've even introduced themselves. Whereas I feel like the UK ones, unless they've watched like loads of Love Island, they probably won't know many of the American ones. Like as you saw, Justine literally admitted to being a super fan of these people. Like she can't believe she's in the same villa as them. It just creates like a weird, you know, like dynamic. Like it's not, everyone's not really on the same level playing field, I, I guess, in terms of like followers, which to normal people doesn't mean anything, but to people that go on Love Island where they seek that kind of validation, I wonder if that kind of changes how they go about who they pick to be with. Moving on, Sally admits that she already fancies Toby and wants to pick him. I don't know, Toby must smell like Dior Sauvage 24 seven. That man, whenever he's on Love Island, it's as if all the girls are attracted to him. It's as if he's got a magnet and the girls are just coming to him. Like their bikinis just pop off when they see him. The entire group then gather around the sofa and ask each other some icebreaker questions. Are you guys here for the love or to win? <laughs> I think being here, you kind of have to be open to finding love. Yeah. Because look yeah. how many beautiful, beautiful people there are. Yeah. You know what I mean? From all over the world in one place. Yeah, sure, Jack. Again, that's why you're here, isn't it? Nothing about the appearance fee or the 100k in cash prize fund. No, that's just that's just in the, the back of my mind, that one. I wish they'd just be honest and say, yeah, I, honestly, I'm just, I'm here for the money and to, uh, you know, like, re-engage me following so I get better brand deals. Like, if they said that, I would have so much more respect for them. At least you know they're just being real. Being real is so much better than pretending to appear to be real. Yeah, yeah, so I'm actually here just to uh, increase my Instagram story viewers so Pretty Little Thing decide to give me an extra grand for a story slide. I'd be like, yes, yes, queen, get your bag up, get your PLT bag ready. And after this, two Australian all-star Love Islanders enter the villa. <laughs> Boss, how are you? Wait, what part of Australia is he from? Cardiff? He doesn't sound Australian. I'm Jessica, and last year I was on Love Island Australia season four. I don't really have a filter. When I don't like someone, I do this face. When I don't like someone, I do this face. Okay, well you seem like a like a lovely person. I am a bit of a firecracker, I do admit, and some people may villainize me for it, but guess what? I don't give a fuck. I feel like I'm being negative here. But you know people that like constantly go on about them not giving a fuck, I feel like they're the people that give the most fuck. Because people that really don't give a fuck just don't mention it. They just live and breathe not giving it. You know what I mean? I feel like someone that has to constantly tell you it, they're kinda just trying to be something they're not. My name's Callum, I'm 25, I'm originally from Wales, but I'm currently in Brisbane, Australia. And I was on Love Island, Australia 
season four. Is that hardly fair? Imagine how Australians are feeling watching this. You can't have a guy from Wales as an Australian all-star islander. The Aussies have been cheated out with a spot there. It's like when an English footballer isn't good enough to play for England, then they decide to just play for Scotland because their cousin's grandma's second dog was born in Scotland. I used to think it was 100% about looks, but I feel like I'm a little bit more mature now, so it's like 80% looks, 20% personality. <laughs> so after the two new islanders walk in, the groups then separate into two, the girls group and the guys group, because remember guys, lads and girls, they can't have platonic friendships. <laughs> Are you stupid? And one interesting thing that goes on in the lads' conversation is Toby says he's already memorised all of the girls' names. What bikini? Oh, red. And yeah, money. bikini here. And to be fair, the one next to me as well. Oh, Justine. Yeah. You waste, man! How do you know all the names, bro? Bo, I pay attention. That is the, the sign of a true fuckboy. If a fuckboy wants to sleep with someone, they can unlock 100% of their brain. Have you seen that movie, Lucy, where Scarlett Johansson, like, unlocks all of her brain and she can do anything? That's what people like Toby can turn into. They can be like, like red bikini. Okay, she's called Lucy. Birth year 1998. Scorpio. Also, that Callum seems completely shocked that Toby can remember a girl's name. Is it really a skill to remember someone's name five minutes after they've told you? The bar is honestly so high. Yeah, guys, like how, how are me and mortals like me meant to compete? Callum then comes out with another corker of a line. Not all about love, innit? You know what I mean? Like you could have a bird that's like a 10 or a 10, but she can't even like throw a fucking golf ball. You know what I mean? Like you gotta have a bird that's like can fucking run. Yeah, well, that doesn't sound creepy at all. Yeah mate, I need a girl that can run, you know, because after I've had a few Stellas at the pub, I come home and I just start swinging. She better run fast. The villa then welcomes two more islanders who are from France and Sweden. I'm Steph, I'm 24, from Paris. I used to play basketball at high level. I model. I'm Lisa, I'm 28 years old and I was in Love Island, Sweden, season three. I feel like they should put someone in from like like a, like a an obscure Love Island, you know, like, like Love Island, Zimbabwe. Love Love Island, Syria. Love Island, Kazakhstan. You know, somewhere where they just don't speak a word of English? Just put them in there, see how they do. It's a social experiment, for Christ's sake. Maya Jama comes in and tells the contestants about the 100k prize fund. She also tells them the games run everything. They run who people couple up with, who stays, who goes home. And they also decide the winners of the 100k. And those challenges will determine everything. And to take home a massive $100,000. <laughs> And then the show cuts to the first Love Island game and the girls who complete the challenge in the shortest period of time get to choose which guy they want to couple up with first. And the first game is basically a cross between an assault course and a total wipeout course. It's a bit mad, I can't lie. The girls have to jump through a wall which then lands them in a skip, which is quite a big drop. Then they have to dunk their whole body under water to retrieve stars. And then they have to strip down into the least amount of clothing as possible. And then untie one of the boy islanders they were randomly matched up with to help them complete the challenge. And after they do this, they then have to take that boy onto the beach, then run into the sea, come back and start necking on with the boy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> What's going on here? It's like a like a really kinky version of I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. You're doing great. You're doing great. Well done. Great tongue action. You're doing great. Talk about full meals for camp. I think somebody's ate enough, guys. The only real drama that happens during this entire game is between Jess and Callum, as Jess outs Callum for absolutely fucking it over on their season. And she says he's the last person she wants to be matched up with and have to kiss on the beach. Is there one in particular you want? Definitely not Callum, because he's had his go. Okay. <laughs> Hey. I did try to get to know him and we did share a couple of kisses um, and then he chose someone else at a recovery. Cow! Which is fair enough if someone's messed you over. And then when she randomly has to draw a guy to help her with the challenge, it ends up being Callum, which was actually quite a funny moment. Let's see who you go. Um, let's go on this one. I can't lie, this is the, the only interesting part of the show and it's took us an hour to get here. I'm not trying to give like an early opinion because we've still got a bit of the show to watch but this is nowhere near as good as actual Love Island. And even though Jess says she hates Callum's guts, when it came to kissing him on the beach, she fully went for it. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Woo! Hello! 
Oh, that's a, that's a proper hate kiss. That's a kiss full of venom. If I was Jessica, I would just be making sure my mouth was just filling up with much slava as possible. But yeah, have that. Have this tsunami of slava. That is awful. What am I? This show's turning me feral. The intrusive thoughts one on this occasion, guys. Don't worry, it won't happen again. I can't promise that. Maybe it will. And then they chose in order which boy they wanted to couple up with. And the couples are as follows. We have Jessica and Steph, Liberty and Callum, Sally and Toby, Justine and Jack, Lisa and Curtis. And I'm on him, Ray. And what is interesting is the UK boys just got chosen straight away. It's like the girls know where the fame and the money's at. Ain't nobody want a guy from Australian version of Love Island who's actually Welsh. What kind of Instagram brand deals are you going to get with that? It's such a weird dynamic though because in normal Love Island they're picking someone that they're just clearly attracted to, you know, whether it's physically... There's always at least one voice break in these videos. Or emotionally. But with this show, it's strange because are they picking them because they're attracted to them? Or because athletically they look the best to complete the games? I don't know. I, I can't get in the headspace of how they're going to do this. This villa is hands down the best villa I've ever seen in my whole life. I'm seeing words on the wall. What? And we're right next to the beach. What? What, what words are crazy? Soul ties and hideaway? Whoa. Oh, oh. God, they've definitely used the th 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 thesaurus for this one. Excuse the lisp. All of the couples then split off to kind of get to know each other. And what is interesting with this is there's a little bit questioning about like trying to get to know each other a little bit. But most of the chat's technical and about how they're going to progress and win these games. Which just says to me that there ain't going to be no loving on this love island. They should have just called it the island games or something because this show's not about love. However, one thing I was critical uh, at the start with the lads about not being open and like like being real. I feel like a lot of the couples are being real because some of the uh, Love Islanders are literally saying yeah I, I want to win this. Which contrasts heavily with normal Love Island because if you said that on a season of Love Island UK it's like suicide on the show. It's like what? You want to you want to win this show? What? What you've come on a competition show to win it? Oh, could you? For some reason that's like really frowned upon to say. But I guess it's not as bad to admit it on this one because you're, you're meant to win the game. Such a strange concept. There wasn't much interesting conversation going on in these couples, the, the only one bit that kind of stood out was when Steph said to Jess that she wasn't his first choice because she doesn't look sporty enough. I don't want to lie, I'm an honest person. Yeah, my first choice was, I think, Lisa. You know, I'm here for challenge, you know, and I like sportive uh, ladies. I mean, you know. Sporty lose. ladies. Yeah, but... He was insinuating that I'm not fucking sporty. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Say anything but that. Fair enough if someone was your, your first choice. that that That's fine, right? But don't don't say to the girl in front of you that she doesn't look sporty when you don't even know her. Yeah, love, honestly, you are not my first choice because you look like you'd be shocking at rounders. I'm never number two. Like, I do not like being number two. It's not a thing. Like, it's number one or nothing. And I don't accept any less. Pop off, queen. Honestly, girls, never settle for anything less than what you're worth. Someone stick that on a t-shirt or on a board in a 40-year-old white woman's house. Honestly, guys, if they say that you're not sporty enough, just pick up a cricket bat and shove it up their backside. See if that's sporty enough for them. Christine also admits that Jack is not her type and that she'd actually romantically be more attracted to Curtis. Like, I feel like Jack, for me, is going to be great for the games. As a couple, I feel like I probably would have vibed more with Curtis. Now that's a curveball. It's those salsa moves. It's the Argentine tango. Is that the tango? I don't know the... Bit of that, isn't it? Just waiting for the Strictly call up. It's fine. It's fine. So why did you choose Jack then? Probably because he's built like an absolute brick shit house and looks like he'd be really good at athletic games. That's probably the reason. I love that this show is basically like dating in the apocalypse. You have to date on like survival skills and physical attributes rather than if you actually just love them. It's a little bit mental. Oh my god. I mean, your quiff is brilliant, but would it survive if a tsunami hit? I don't think so, Jack. There's only one real romantic connection that seems to be able to go the distance and that's between Toby and Sally. I feel like them two look like a, like a thick couple and they kind of, their, their personalities match. Seeing that, Liberty and Callum necked on straight away outside of the game, so what do I know? Maya Jama then comes back into the villa for the second time of the episode and she gathers all the islanders round the fire pit for a challenge. This involves two new islanders coming in and these two new islanders are going to kiss two people each that they like the look of. However, the 
the current Islanders aren't going to know who they chose because they're all going to be blindfolded. I'm quite nervous. I'd be shook if I was you. You don't know who's coming into kids. You dare can't see in this either. Christ, the new Bird Box movie looks absolutely crap. To be fair, the first one was as well, so it's not really a downgrade. The two new bombshells are Megan from the UK Love Island and also Johnny from USA. I'm Megan Button Hansen. You'll know me from Love Island UK season four. I'm Johnny, I'm back, and I'm here to win. Megan chooses to kiss Callum heavily and also Steph, whereas Johnny decides to kiss Amani and Selly, which is interesting because apparently in his season, he had a four month relationship with Sally. So I wonder if that's going to be like a love triangle with so I wonder if that's going to be like a love triangle with Toby, him and Sally. This show needs something. I'm, I'm just trying to manufacture some beef right now. The two New Islanders who kissed the blindfolded ones then leave and the episode ends. So I guess in the next episode the current Islanders are going to find out who kissed them and blah de blah de blah. And if you want me to react to the rest of this season because it's not going to be aired in the UK <laughs> I'm not going to lie, this was pretty bad so 4,000 likes, okay quite a high target and we'll do that. Also if you want to watch me react to Love Island's most explosive moments, click right here. Or watch me break down a British TV show right here.